Chapter 10. Football. Kutamundra in the 60s fielded very strong football teams in three codes. Rugby league, rugby union, and Aussie rules, like so many small towns. Sport was the done thing. I played rugby league all through my school years. And in my last year at high school, I also played with the Kutamundra town side. It was easy as most of my mates played football as well. We were part of the Murrumbidgee Rugby League, a breakaway group from the country rugby league at the time. Many locals were worried for years about the drain of our players to the city. And there was very little support from country rugby league. Back to towns like ours who nurtured future champions in Sydney. It was all one way to the city. So Kutamundra and the local towns formerly known as Group 9 formed the Rebel League along with teams from Wagga. We were warned that playing with the MRL would jeopardise our chances of representative play. Big deal. All I wanted to do was play football with my mates. And besides I knew my limitations. I was only an average player. I was reasonably fast on my feet. But I couldn't sidestep and my ball handling skills were not great. I couldn't kick the ball very well either. The only thing I could do well was in defence. I was an effective tackler. We tackled around the legs in those days. A shoulder into the guts. Arms around the waist. And then slide down the legs. The ball carrier would go down like a ton of bricks. So it is no surprise that I was a forward. The guys that do all the hard yakka during a game. While all those pansies in the back line get all the glory from scoring tries. At the end of the game we'd be covered in dirt and grime. Whilst the backline boys were still in their freshly ironed shorts and jerseys. Bloody poses. It is important for you to know this because of what happened next at Kapuka. You see as part of our training we had lectures about life, or something like that. I wasn't really paying attention. They were delivered by the Padres. As part of the deal we had one-on-one -on -one sessions with them, a sort of counselling session, to see how we were coping with the army gig. For some reason that my memory fails to justify, I found myself big noting my football playing ability to the Padre. In essence I told him what I described above and how good a tackler I was. I could stop anyone. I boasted. The Padre stood up. Do you reckon you could stop me? I should have had a rethink then and there. Why would the Padre ask me that? I checked him out. He was in his 30s, of stocky build and thinning hair. He was staring at me. I met his eyes and said, yeah, I could stop you. I don't have to tell you that he played representative football, rugby union, for the army and he was one of those pansy type backline poses I derided earlier. Me and my big mouth. Maybe this army caper was making me a little bit too cocky. Come Saturday, with borrowed football boots, there I was playing football for the army. Rugby union is similar to rugby league except as the player is tackled, he releases the ball and the forwards form a ruck around him. The ball is contested by the sheer weight and grunt of the scrum of forwards. It helps if you have a thick forehead and an oversized neck. I was quite skinny and I paid the price by being mauled, pushed and battered. Those guys were crazy. Tackling in rugby union is the same as in rugby league. Only it's different. The backs were pussy cats. As soon as it looked like you were about to tackle them they would collapse. The forwards were a different kettle of fish. They just kept coming at you. They were hunched over, the ball lost somewhere in their giant hands, their eyes were like slits and they had no necks. I worked out that if I crouched down I'd just grab hold of them as they rampaged by me. I'd hang on as if my life depended upon it and that's when I learned another lesson in rugby union. You see, in rugby league a tackle around the ankles is equivalent to those poses scoring tries. You held the ball carrier's legs just a little bit longer. So you could bask in the applause from the crowd. Not so in rugby union. If you hung on a bit too long in the tackle you suffered the wrath of the marauding forwards, I told you about. As they formed a scrum over the top of you, there was no escape. They didn't care what was on the ground, including you, as they pummeled your body with their boots searching for the ball. Football boots have sprigs on the soles to help you grip the earth on those wet and soggy days. There are seven sprigs on each boot as evidenced by the marks on my back. However, I did survive the encounter. I don't think I even touched the ball during the whole game. I was quite dirty and in addition to the welcome to army rugby message on my back, my ears were bleeding at the top on the inside edge where they were ground against my skull by those crazy marauding feral forwards. By contrast, the posers in the back line looked like they hadn't even played, yet they had scored the tries and there they were poncing around with their entourage and hangers on. After a shower and a change into civvies, I ended up at the sportsman club, a clubhouse for the back line to tell their war stories about how good they were during the game. There weren't many recruits there, you could tell by the haircuts. They had short hair on the side of their heads but it was quite long on the top by army standards. For a moment I thought they must have let some RAAF boys in. Most seemed to be officers. You could tell by the smug supercilious smirk on their faces. I had a couple of beers and chatted to a few of the chaps. The older officers were interesting but the younger ones were up themselves. 
I didn't belong in that group. Sport is a good level and in the army, but I felt out of place. I was glad I missed out on officer selection and I couldn't wait to get back to the boys at 22. Back at 22 and some of the boys said they watched the game. There was a bit of affirmation from the group. You played good, Cav. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you were always there. I don't think I even touched the ball. Doesn't matter, mate. It's a team sport. You were there for all the rucks. Yeah, right. Have you seen my ears and my back? So that was my one and only football game in the army. I promised myself that in future I would keep my big mouth shut and not be so cocksure about myself. Maybe that's what the Padre wanted to teach me. I remember his name. He was Father Tink.